On today's ChurchTechCast.com screencast show, dealing with light backgrounds that have light text. Hi, and welcome again to another episode of the ChurchTechCast.com screencast show. This is the show where every week I help you with uh, the software that we use in the church. My name is Paul Allen Clifford. I'm your host. And I'd love for you to ask your question, so just do that below the video. So, I was on one of the many groups that I frequent that deal with church tech, and someone said, okay, I've got a problem. I've got a light background, and I've got light text and I need to put a bar behind it or something, how do I do it? Well, first off, it was really cool. Someone referenced one of my videos and it wasn't me. So that was really cool. But uh, then I thought, you know, I made this a while ago for ProPresenter 5. Why not show just a couple of solutions for this problem in ProPresenter 6. So let's over, head over to my computer and do just that. Okay, so you probably already see the problem. Here we have light colored text on a light colored background. So how do we deal with that? Well, there are a few strategies that we can use. First, the one that I typically use is this. You'll notice that this doesn't have anything to separate it from the background, but this one does. You see how that just pops out there? That is uh, an outline. And this is actually one of the features that, even if you're not using ProPresenter, if the worship software that you are looking at does not have an outline on the text, just move on along, because that's really it's such a basic feature that I really think that that's just a bare minimum of what you need. So that's what I would normally do. But sometimes that's really not enough. So let's talk about something else that maybe is another way to deal with it. Let's say that for some reason your leadership doesn't want the outline text, it doesn't work for some reason, what have you and you're stuck with the non-outline text like this. Well, let's look at another strategy. So I'm going to right-click on this and click Edit Slide. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to this Shapes thing right here, and I'm going to draw a shape. And I'm going to put that there. Drag it over here. Now that's not all that helpful because it's the same color. And as it turns out, it's also in a bad order. So we also need to bring that below that. So shape element, I'm going to highlight that once again and go back over here. And I'm going to change this fill color. Let's change this fill color to like this. Actually, let's change it to that and see if I can't lower the opacity just a bit to keep it, to make it pop, okay? So now I've got this here, and that works pretty well. So let's just uh, get out of that, and we'll bring it up here. Great job. Now, as soon as I go to the net, what, what happened? It just, just, yeah, I'm just acting a little bit for you there um, because I knew it was going to happen because this is on the same layer as the slide. So how do we get this to keep going throughout the rest of the song? Well, we make that into a template. So let's uh, right click here and save selected slides as template group. So I'm going to, let's call this um, shadow 
box one. Okay, let's do that. Now, I should be able to right click on this and apply that template, shadow box one, right there. And let's see if it carries over. So now, there it is. See? Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound of the Savior wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found, was blind, but now I see. So that's how we do it, is we just make that a template. So when you are making a template, what it's actually doing is it's doing all the changes to the slide layer, but it does it as a... Uh, it does all those changes at once, so that's actually a much faster way to do that. So while I could have just copied and pasted and copied and pasted and so on, it's really much easier just to select multiple ones. So I did a command click on both of those, right click and go to template, shadow box one, template one, and bam. And now see how easy that is. So those are a couple of ways that you can make it so that light colored text, or I guess dark colored text for that matter, appears on a light colored background, or dark, dark colored text appears on a dark colored background, although I typically just keep it light. Those are a couple of strategies that you can use in ProPresenter 6, although it'll technically also work in ProPresenter 5. Well, I hope that helped you. I hope that now you know the strategies to take to do your best to deal with a light background and light text. In ProPresenter, it's really easy. And as I said before, if you're using other software, just absolutely discount it immediately if it won't do outline text. That's just bare minimum in my book. So keep that in mind. If you like this content, you'd like my email newsletter, so head on over to trinitydigitalmedia.com slash gifts, G-I-F-T-S, and you can pick up your church tech gift there, along with the free subscription to my email newsletter. Also head over to trinitydigitalmedia.com slash store, and you can pick up any of the resources I've created for you, the church techie, in mind, or you could get all of them just like an all-you-can-eat buffet of church tech learning goodness at churchtechu.com. So head over to the store, pick that up. Uh, the As I add more and more resources, the price will go up. So uh, I would jump on that sooner rather than later because once you become a member, I'm not going to raise the price on you later. That's not right. So uh, I'll leave the price as is for you, but it'll go up for other people, so just keep that in mind. Until next time, this is Paul Allen Clifford with TrinityDigitalMedia.com. Go out and change eternity.